How can we make EVs affordable for everyone? They would need to become much, much cheaper than gas cars. To solve this problem, we need to make the most expensive part of the EV cheaper. And the most expensive part is the battery. So let's explain how we can make batteries affordable so they can become cheaper for everyone. And I think uh, to, to your point, the rest of the car is less expensive already. So there's far, uh, far fewer moving parts. Uh, the parts can be less expensive themselves. Uh, Tesla is leading the way in terms of new technologies for uh, putting together the cars in less expensive ways. So the rest of the car is not, a, is not in question. It mm -hmm. comes down to the powertrain. And while, while uh, uh, gas combustion engines are fairly expensive to create, they're not as expensive as the current um, electric uh, battery versions are. Right. Uh, electric cars have far fewer parts than the gasoline cars. So the drivetrain, Tesla's talked about getting that below $1,000. So then you have to have some inexpensive motors um, along with the batteries. So it'd be minimal other than the, you know, the seats and the body, which would be the same as the, as the gas cars. And so we can look at um, for sodium ion battery, they're already starting to make those sodium um, ion battery cars. And sodium ion is interesting versus um, the lithium in that this uh, Wood McKenzie thing shows on the, on the left that the cost of materials for the CATL version of the sodium ion battery is down to $4 of raw materials for each kilowatt hour versus the current cheapest lithium battery, the iron battery, LFP, at $24 for raw materials, six times more, and then $67 for the nickel cobalt manganese uh, version battery, which is one of the most uh, dominant forms of these batteries. Okay. So the potential is to get it down, the price down 10 times, taking a battery pack down from $12,000 or, or $20,000 down to $1,000 or less. Yeah, and of course, each of these different chemistries has different advantages and disadvantages in terms of the power density and and uh, in terms of where they are really good for things like acceleration um, or where they're really good for longevity, lasting. You know, where the battery might last a million years, million uh, miles, miles longer. Yeah, miles, not years. <laughs> Although I don't know, the possibility probably exists. Um, so there are uh, advantages and disadvantages to each of those. But when you're talking about a very inexpensive car, then in most cases that uh, sodium ion battery is going to be plenty for the kind of acceleration you're going to want on a under twenty thousand dollar vehicle. So the sodium batteries, which are basically, you know, salt being the major ingredient of it in the in the chemical, uh, are heavier right now. The generation ones might be able to get 200 miles of range uh, in the vehicle versus the 300 to 500 miles of range for uh, the better um, lithium uh, cars. But um, those things will be will be solved with either better versions. Also, you can see ATL looking to mix in a hybrid form of the vehicle where they'll have like one um, sodium battery, one lithium battery, and basically you can then tune and say, okay, I want so much range, so much cost, and then get the optimal amount because they can just work together um, to get to, to, to lower cost and, and the precise range you want. Yeah, And it also lets them scale up because they're um, making most of the... Um, lithium batteries in the world in China and uh, CATLs making, you know, 35% of the world batteries. So they know that they can um, adapt their equipment for the sodium ion batteries and, um, and scale that up uh, quite quickly. Yeah. So, and, and uh, there's a, again, if we can get the cost of that battery down to uh, something that would be less than the you know current drivetrain for uh, an ICE vehicle, then there's absolutely no reason why the uh, total car cost couldn't be down in the teens. Now, we already have some examples with BYD in China selling a, a decent car. I think it's either the SEAL. I can't remember the SEAL. I think mm -hmm. it's um, for $11,000 equivalent in China. Now, that car would be close to $20,000. 
even if it goes as far as Australia, but by the time you pay transportation and duties and things, but you're still looking at, you know, 11 to 20,000 um, for a, for a decent car. Right. Yeah. Getting 200, 300 miles of range for a decent car and to, um, to get the, the cost down to 15,000, maybe even 10,000 um, for a, a non-China version uh, of, of a vehicle. Uh, Non-China version being one that uh, meets um, certain higher safety standards. And the safety standards might be easier to meet once you ha we have what could be transforming this year, which would be um, full self-driving, level four driving, where you wouldn't be having the number of accidents um, that, that we currently have, which would make it easier for these vehicles. And we also have, uh, we did a video the other day where we talked about the robots again. When you've got humanoid robots in the plant, you combine that with Tesla's unboxed approach. Uh, you put that in Mexico where you have the lower lower labor rates than even China. Um, you might have a combination where the Mexico bots, um, better methodologies, uh, et cetera, et cetera, could easily produce a car that would be under 20,000 that would have all the features that any, uh, you know, first world country would be interested in having on their cars. Yeah. And then another big advantage for the um, sodium ion is that the supply of cheap sodium, which is in soda ash, one of the largest supplies in the world is in Wyoming. So currently, um, most of the lithium is in uh, China, Australia, and Chile. So the U.S. had the potential to become uh, the Saudi Arabia of uh, sodium um, soda ash, uh, and also for sodium ion batteries, but having the all supply. Right. Yeah. Ob obviously, that's a benefit. It it's interesting that uh, Elon Musk had said uh, a couple of three years ago. He said, "You know, if you let the world know that there's going to be a shortage, it's absolutely guaranteed." that the world will find what it is that they need. And he's just been right over and over again. The nickel was the question for a while. Lithium was a big question. Now the price of lithium has dropped through the floor. Um, and then there's uh, these, you know, sodium. I mean, all these different things uh, keeps, keeps turning up that there's a lot more of it than we thought uh, once the word gets out that there, there's some profit to be made. Yeah, so th that's the thing for when we were looking for oil and, and natural gas, because we were looking for decades and spending hundreds of billions of dollars uh, a year on that, then we ended up finding the vast majority of that oil. But we're still finding more and more of it as we uh, uh, as we kept looking. Every decade, there was to be more of it. And um, that's the case for soda, sodium and for many other materials. Sodium is in the ocean. So salt water, you could get it there. It's just a question of, you know, did you want to spend the money to develop that as a resource or is it easier to get large quantities from soda ash? Uh, for now, the, the economics work out better to get it from soda ash. But eventually, if you need an economy a thousand times bigger, 10,000 times bigger, maybe we'll need to go to the ocean. But um, fortunately, that option is something we can look for. Right, yes. And Elon, and once again, Elon Musk has pointed out, he says, if you use solar as your source of energy, solar and batteries as your source of energy for a desalinization plant, you can literally uh, uh, make pure water cheaper than you currently are getting it from rivers, et cetera, et cetera. You can make, you can make it for, you know, less than a penny a gallon and at the same time be extracting some of these other mi minerals that are in the water. <laughs> so do we think the price point is um, $10,000, $15,000? Because you want to replace not just the new cars, which if you get to $25,000, you can replace all the new cars because in the U.S., uh, the average price is $40,000 for a gas car. Um, but if you got to uh, $15,000, that would start to replace the used cars, all the 2 billion used cars, which is the vast majority of vehicles, right? Would you give up um, a an older gas car um, to switch to uh, electric at, at that ten fifteen thousand dollar price, especially if you have to pay five thousand dollars a year, four thousand dollars a year for the gasoline on the on the uh, the gas car. 
Yeah. So there's a, there's a, of course, there's so many different economic issues in what you just said. So for instance, I just sold a 10, 12 year old Volvo uh, that only had a hundred thousand miles on it for $4,000. So, you know, you'd have to have a, probably a 6,000 or $7,000 vehicle. But now when you get that new electric car, that's six or $7,000, it's not going to be nearly as nice as that $4,000 Volvo was. Then as you start to see these prices come in better and better and better on the electric cars and the used cars become worth less, they don't become worth zero. So maybe that Volvo would sell for 2000 instead of 4000 So you have, you have all kinds of moving parts here. Um, you may get into a situation like we did years ago where at least the U.S. government would say, okay, we want, we're going to pay you to junk your car uh, mm -hmm. because we want these off the road and, uh, and potentially... There's so many of them being junked that there really becomes a huge business in recycling and getting some of the major uh, minerals, metals, et cetera, uh, into, use, into useful uh, forms. So there's a bunch of things that are probably going to take place over the next 10 years as we really get significant numbers of electric cars on the streets. I guess one other factor, which we'll be discussing later is in another video, is robo-taxis, that if... <clears throat> the miles driven or miles that you ride is shifted over to uh, electric robotaxis. And you would shift over to electric robotaxis because they can potentially last a half million miles, a million miles. So the economics of an electric vehicle are superior to a gas vehicle. So then a new robotaxi would then displace the miles that someone would use in a in a used gas car again, because the cost per mile could go from seventy-five cents down to twenty cents for, um, or even fifteen or ten. So that economics could change uh, how many how we how we drive vehicles. Yeah, there's there's no question that the whole business of robo taxis is going to be fraught with economic uh, and social upheaval as people adjust to a completely new way of doing transport. Okay, so so I think the answer is that uh, Sony Line will be uh, contributing greatly to the transition to yes. an all electric future um, in in tra transportation, also in thick storage. So um, it will be a key part of the equation, and it is being ramped up as we speak. Right. Yep. Okay.